today. AMD's next gen is unbelievable. RTX 4000 gets way better power draw, Intel finally talks desktop arc release, and this is Ryzen 7000. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up for today, if you've owned a Ryzen CPU over the years or you just read some reviews, you likely know there's one thing that can have a big impact on performance that doesn't do the same for Intel CPUs, and that's RAM speed. And the reason for that is because the Infinity Fabric speed is directly correlated to the system memory speed. Remember that AMD's Infinity Fabric is the interconnect that combines the different chiplets. Well, with all of that said, according to a new report from WCCF Tech, AMD is sticking to the same thing in Zen 4, except this time Ryzen 7000 gets a 1 to 1 parity with memory speeds up to DDR5 6000, meaning AMD's Infinity Fabric is getting a massive boost in performance over current gen. I mean, we're talking 2000 higher than Ryzen 5000, so the Infinity Fabric will get up to 3000 megahertz, which for those who don't know, DDR5 6000 is mega transfers per second. The actual frequency of the memory is 3000 megahertz. Basically, we with speeds this high, AMD will likely not offer support for DDR4, given it would massively impact performance. Now, with all of that said, there is some bad news. For one, while higher clock memory is supported, apparently anything above 6000 runs at a 1 to 2 ratio, meaning your infinity fabric speed will be half the memory speed. WCCF Tech was told that running at, say, 6400 is not recommended. That's because your actual fabric clock would then be at 1600 MHz, while at DDR4, 5, 6, 000, it would be at 3000. The second issue is that it sounds like AMD may have some memory support issues at first. Ultimately, this is really exciting for AMD's next-gen CPUs, and I have an even bigger story on it in just a few. But first, you've got to check out the brand new fantasy RPG that I'm already sucked into. It's called Bloodline Heroes of Lithus, and they sponsored today's video so I can tell you all about this unique game. And when I say unique, I mean it. Because in Bloodlines, you can not only collect champions and build your kingdom, but you can actually combine champions from different races through their bloodline to create the ultimate character. Whether it's orcs, lichens, demons, elves, and more, the family tree is yours to build, making for the ultimate character customization. For example, check out this powerful hybrid of a fire and thunder demigod. And of course, let's not forget this seriously impressive graphics, as well as a really fun card-based combat system. This game has it all, and it's free to play on Android and iOS. So what are you waiting for? Download the game by visiting my link in the description or scan the QR code. And when you use my gift code, you'll get one champion token and a hundred diamonds for free. Once again, that link is down in the description below. Next up for today, it looks like Nvidia is making some big changes to their RTX 4000 cards before release, specifically when it comes to power draw. According to a new post from resident leaker Copite 7 Kimmy, the RTX 4080 is now looking at a much more reasonable total board power of 320 watts. Of course, we know the 4080 received a downgrade recently, so it makes sense. Moving down to the 4070, we're now looking at 285 watts. And what's interesting about that card is that also, according to Copite 7 Kimmy, at that 285 watts, it gets a maximum clock speed of over 2800 megahertz, which is a huge jump over their last gen GPUs. In fact, according to WCCF Tech, the 4070 should offer up to 43 teraflops of FP32 compute performance. What's wild is that the 3090 Ti currently only gets 40 teraflops of FP32 compute. So Nvidia's next gen still looks like a massive jump in gaming performance. That and clearly GPU clock speed is going through the roof. At least they won't require a nuclear power plant to run at full speed. Next up, Intel is finally discussing the actual release of their desktop Arc GPUs. This story comes from an official blog post by Intel, where they discuss the upcoming cards. And the first interesting bit of information is right here, where it says, quote, Intel Arc GPUs are scheduled for release later this year, with, as Ryan explained, lots of Game 1 driver updates with launch day support for the biggest titles and ongoing improvements for older games too. Then further down, it says, quote, when available, the Intel Arc cards can be purchased through various retailers and PC builders globally, as well as directly via the Intel store. So there you have it. 
even this far along, Intel won't give us an actual release date for their global launch. It's apparently coming later this year. They also plan to sell the cards from their Intel store, though that's probably just for their first party limited edition GPUs. And speaking of those, Intel shared a new render of the upcoming A770, which really does look good here. Not only that, but they discussed the difference between the A770 and A750 limited edition cards. Here it says, quote, the higher performance A770 has chrome accents running around the outside and top for some extra flash. When the cards are powered on, the edge and the fan ducts diffuse addressable RGB LEDs for a smooth, high-quality light effect. So yeah, not much difference between the A770 and A750 when it comes to first-party cards. But that's obviously not all that important. The real question is whether they can remain relevant with next-gen AMD and NVIDIA cards. And lastly for today, a massive story dropped on AMD's next-gen Ryzen 7000 CPUs. I'm talking the final box and pricing, so let's get right into it. The story originally comes from a new report by Video Cards. In it, they received a render that supposedly of AMD's Ryzen 7000 box. Now, while they weren't able to confirm it with other sources, it supposedly comes from an internal presentation at AMD. Either way, as you can see, this looks incredibly well done, and definitely something AMD would use for packaging. Basically, it's likely not a fake, but we can't be 100% sure. Regardless, I do really like it, and video cards felt good enough to publish it, so it is likely real. With that in mind, the same user also shared information about pricing. As you can see here, according to this, AMD's Ryzen 7 7700X MSRP is set to be the same as their 5500X. Then there's the Ryzen 7 7800X, which I guess shows that the 7700X won't actually replace the 7800X. Unfortunately, the 7800X is set to be more expensive than the 5800X. Basically, it looks like AMD may be set to go up in price, which is a bit confusing. Intel's 13th gen is expected to get a bigger jump in performance than we thought, so I guess AMD thinks they can remain the top dog, or they could just be planning to lower it once Raptor Lake is released. Next, we have the Ryzen 9 7900X and 7950X, which are also apparently set to be more expensive than last gen. All in all, we'll have to wait until the CPU's release before determining if this is a good deal or not. And of course, this is a great reason why it's important to have competition in the market. So while that does it for today, are you pumped for AMD's next-gen CPUs? And if so, which one will you be buying? Let me know down in the comments below. And definitely make sure to check out Bloodline Heroes of Lithus down in the description below. And as always, have a great day!